What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today this video is about the top three batteries that I'm asked questions about on a daily basis. A lot of times people will phrase questions like, which is the best battery? And you know, the answer isn't as simple as there's just, you know, a simple best battery. There's differences and they don't all do exactly the same thing. I mean, they are all batteries in the same sense, but you have different use cases when certain batteries work better than others and there's certain capabilities that some of these batteries have that others don't. And so I'm gonna be giving kind of just a, an overall comparison of the three different batteries and giving you know a little bit of insight to which batteries are better in different scenarios. All right, so in the first category, I'm talking about just overall specs, kilowatt versus kilowatt hour. The main thing that I want you guys to take from this is that first kilowatt and kilowatt hour are not the same thing. A lot of you already know this, but kilowatts is kind of like how much horsepower you have in kilowatt hours is like how many gallons of gas you have in your tank. So uh, another way to think about it is like if you have a jug of water, how many gallons of water in the jug, that's how many kilowatt hours, how fast the nozzle can drain that water, that's kilowatts. And so when you are looking at the end phase five P battery, it's only a five kilowatt hour unit. It's not made to be a, a 13 or a 10 kilowatt hour battery. You actually stack multiple 5P batteries next to each other and then you get the, the benefits of all of the inverters because the inverters are built into each battery. So you just basically would multiply these figures by two, three, four, depending upon how many batteries you have. Um, when you get to a certain point, there could be some limitations where you are only getting, you know, like 40 amps or 50 or 60 amps of potential back feed, but that's a little bit more advanced for this video. The point is that you shouldn't look at this 5p battery and go oh it's only five kilowatt hours and it only puts out 3.84 continuous well it's not as good as a tesla power well that's 13 and a half kilowatt hours well sure if you're only comparing one 5p to a tesla power well sure you know it's better to have you know 13 and a half kilowatt hours i agree but you would be stacking multiple 5ps next to each other two or three of them and that's more of a side-by-side -side fair comparison um, so that's the first thing. If you basically go across, the Franklin also has a 13.6 kilowatt hour capacity, so technically slightly larger than the Tesla, but pretty much the same. And the Franklin, it doesn't have the power output that the two other batteries have. It's a little bit lower in the, in the regard of power output, but the Franklin is really versatile and we're using it a lot when um, it comes to retrofits and adding just batteries or more batteries um, or just batteries with more solar. So I'm gonna go into that in a little bit, but the Franklin is a very useful tool when we need it you know, for, for certain circumstances. I'm gonna go into that in a minute. All right, so the next category is just about kind of price point. This is very vague because a lot of people do ask me how much do these batteries cost? And it's a hard question to answer because depending upon where you are in the installation, um, the, the method of installation, your city's permitting, how the process is where you are can differ. And so, you know, I could tell you kind of around where some price points are, but it's not a good indication of what your system may cost. So in general, I can tell you that all these are multiple thousands of dollars. You know, this isn't like a $1,000 or $2,000 battery. You know, just to buy the Powerwall 3 as a contractor, buying them in bulk costs you, you know, somewhere in the range of 9,500 bucks to maybe a little over 10,000. And then you have all of the extra balance of system components, all the wiring, conduit, installation, every all the breakers. Every, there's a lot of other little components, possibly a gateway, meter caller. There's a lot of other things. So uh, these are all, you know, multiple thousands of dollars, but in general, the end phase is going to be your most expensive. Um, you're getting more inverters, you're paying for the, all the micro inverters inside the batteries versus um, with the Tesla Powerwall 3, there's just one inverter that the whole system uh, is being run with. So, uh, you know, you get, a, you get a little bit of a better price point because it also cheapens the cost of doing solar, the, the solar aspect of the job because now you don't necessarily need micro inverters or power optimizers. Um, so overall, Tesla Powerwall 3 is gonna be the cheapest. Also because Tesla, I think, is kind of doing an aggressive market takeover where they're trying to just get all the contractors on their side. They haven't really been too big into having third parties install their products. They've kind of wanted to, for several years, install their own power 
firewalls, but now Tesla's getting out of the installation business and they're basically now saying, hey, every third party contractor, we want you to get trained on installing the power wall. We want you to be certified and we want you to sell the power wall. So they're opening up the market to pretty much every contractor. And I don't know if these super low prices are gonna last forever, but they are definitely coming to market with the lowest price per kilowatt hour in terms of capacity and what you get. The whole battery management system, it's all built into that one battery. So with the Franklin, you, uh, it's a little bit less money than the end phase, but you do have to buy the gateway when you go with the Franklin um, because it is made more for backup. Not that you should be installing batteries just for um, like time of use arbitrage, at least not right now. I do get this question a lot. People say, can I just install batteries and save more money? it's it's gonna cost, the batteries are gonna cost more than what they save you. So it doesn't actually pencil out. So if anything, you should just try to do non-export, a non-export add-on, which is a new thing where basically you can add more solar panels and batteries. That way um, you can more effectively knock out more of your bill. But just adding batteries itself, right now, at least with the peak hour and the non-peak hour difference, it's not enough to justify spending like $15,000 or more on one of these batteries, which is really realistically, if you're just gonna get like a Franklin installed, it's like 15 grand at least. So. All right, and so for this purple column here, this is kind of like the best benefit or the benefit of going with each battery. And so with the end phase system here, you're getting the benefit of the distributed architecture. It's gonna be your most reliable. You have individual panel monitoring. If any microinverter fails, it doesn't take the whole system out. You could even have, cause there's microinverters in each 5P battery. So you could even have a microinverter in your 5P battery fail and you still have, you know, 75% performance or you still have half the battery working. So with some of these other systems, well, both the Tesla and the Franklin, there's just one inverter in the battery itself. So there is one inverter that's powering either the battery or potentially the whole system. Now the Tesla Powerwall, the benefit of this is basically price point. Um, what they're doing is, you know, they've taken out the cost of microinverters, power optimizers off the roof. They do have these MCI rapid shutdown devices that every few panels need, but for the most part, they're very inexpensive. And so overall, you're getting the cheapest price per kilowatt and kilowatt hour going with the Tesla system. And so that's its main benefit. There's nothing really f special about it other than price point. The Franklin system, I really like this system because it's the most versatile. It's pretty much compatible with almost everything. And so if you're looking to add a battery and more panels to an existing system, and you want the old panels and the new panels to both power that battery so you get optimal charging, the Franklin is great for that because you can literally have two different inverter manufacturers, two different systems, and tie them into the same battery. So it's, you know, it's funny, they, they say we're more compatible with Enphase than Enphase. And it's kind of true because if you have like an older Enphase system, you can't even put the 5P batteries on. You'd have to use an older, like the, the T series, like a 10T, which there's some problems with. And so I don't really think it's a great option. And so with the Franklin, you could have an older Enphase system and tie basically the Franklin in and then put new panels even, and it's all one system now. With that being said, the Franklin is a great option, especially for retrofits. Um, all right, so let's go into some of the potential issues with compatibility. So right here with the, I kind of just already said it with the 5P, but the 5P batteries you need IQ8 microinverters for. I know if you go online, it says you can use the IQ7s. There's a lot of kind of behind the scenes work that you need to do to make the system with an older microinverter compatible with 5P and a lot of contractors don't even wanna do it. So for the purpose of this video, it's pretty much only compatible if you have IQ8s and these have only really been out for like a year. And so not very many people that just got their solar installed within the last year are already thinking that they need a battery. So that's a potential issue. You know, it's, it's really good for new installations, um, but it's not really widely yet being used for adding batteries later to older systems. It just doesn't work. The Tesla system at first, when it first came out, you could only DC couple it, which means that you could only basically tie it in um, with DC strings coming off the roof with their MCI device that they've made. Now you can AC couple it. There's a, been a software update. You do need to use the, the gateway though. So you can't use that meter caller, which is that new device that just backs up your whole house for like a thousand bucks. So it's not compatible in that regard. So especially the benefit being the lower price, you know, especially if you want backup, you know, you want to use that meter caller because the meter caller is 
the source of about um, a few thousand dollars in savings versus doing the whole gateway critical loads panel backup rewiring. And so now with the Franklin, like I already said, it's pretty much compatible with almost everything. So that's a main reason why we like to use it. And it's great for retrofits. Now uh, down here, the purple column, this is explaining a little bit more about the AC versus DC coupling. The Enphase 5P battery is only a, an AC coupled battery. Um, you cannot DC couple it. It's only compatible with the micro inverters and that's an AC system coming off the roof. Powerwall 3, you can DC and AC couple it, which is very cool. Most people are gonna be DC coupling it because like I said, that's the real advantage to using the Powerwall 3. Once you get into AC coupling it, you add all the cost of the microinverters in, it's not really saving you any significant money over the other batteries. And so for that reason, you know, you're gonna be pretty much DC coupling it all the time, uh, For I, I would assume, unless you're gonna be retrofitting it. The Franklin battery does have its own inverter like the Tesla Powerwall 3, but it's not a hybrid inverter like the Tesla Powerwall 3 when it's DC coupled where that one inverter in the battery is actually the main inverter for not only the battery but the solar coming down off the roof as well. The Franklin whole home does have the inverter in the battery but that inverter is not going to run your house as well. It's Your house could have the micro inverters or just another string inverter and then from there that power goes to the battery and that inverter in the battery is only responsible for inverting the power back to DC before it's stored and then to AC again when it's called upon to be used. So that's a little bit why you'd want to use the Franklin battery. Now down here, this is about the generator connection because there's a lot of people that are concerned about, can I connect a generator to it? So this is an important thing to know about the Powerwall 3 because it's not necessarily the best when it comes to everything. Now under the Powerwall 3 here, I wrote that you can only have a generator downstream. What that means is that if you go into an off-grid scenario or a blackout scenario, the the generator cannot actually charge the batteries, whereas with the Enphase system and the Franklin system, there's a generator connection into the actual controller. And so what you could do is turn the generator on for a couple hours, charge up the batteries if you needed to, and then run off your batteries again. Versus with the Tesla system, if you went into an off-grid mode and you lost uh, power out of the battery, uh, the generator would have to just run indefinitely forever if you wanted power until power came back on. So you couldn't do like an efficient charge up your batteries real fast and then run off your batteries all day. Um, it, you'd have to just basically turn the generator on. So there's a lot of people that are kind of disappointed with that. And then for that reason, exactly, they actually rule out the Powerwall 3 completely. For most people, I don't think that's a huge issue because I don't think the majority of people are worried about that third layer of uh, redundancy and, and backup. Most people are fine with just solar and the backup batteries. But if you know you're really looking to back up your property and have you know more layers of, of security, then the Tesla Powerwall 3 may not be the best system. You may want to actually go ahead and invest in the in an Enphase or a Franklin system to have that generator compatibility. So with that being said, hopefully this video cleared everything up. I do actually consult and sell solar systems in over almost, well, I think over 30 states now. We keep adding more areas to our list as we build out our network, but give me a call 760-473-5878 or email me in the email below. It's juliansolarguide at gmail.com. I have multiple great contractors around the country and this is my coverage map here so if you're in one of these green states give me a call and hopefully I can help you out.